So it's time for another gardening week and this week we're going to do a bit of a sew along because I lost all my footage for the rest of the gardening week. So um, I will do my best to uh, make this interesting. So I've got all my trays labelled and filled with compost and all the seeds uh, ready to sow. Uh, quite a few from moles actually this year, quite like moles, it's, uh, you know, get, get so many in a packet that it allows you to be sort of quite creative and experiment quite a lot with what you're doing. Okay, so the compost that we're using is Levington's F2S and F2. So the F2S has got sand in it. I don't recommend that one. I recommend the one that doesn't have sand in it. The sand is really primarily for industrial users. So I'm going to start with spinach responder and the reason I'm doing this, which is not my sort of favoured spinach for winter, is because this is a kind of good one for spinach for salads and I'm going to sow quite a lot of spinach for salads because we've been really enjoying spinach in our salads uh, and then I'm going to take it out later on in the year when I have my kind of overwintered spinaches in. Um, so it's just going to fill bed space being such a fast grower just for, you know, like maybe a, a month, six weeks or something like that of harvest. And, uh, and then we'll put maybe um, a bed of spinach for spring in its place and that might overwinter. So again, as I mentioned, I think in the intro, um, what I'm trying to do with, you know, because you've got so many seeds for moles, is just kind of play around with new sowing scenarios. These packets are so incredibly noisy. Anyway, I'm going to put two, three seeds in each module and I'm going to plant them out, as I say, quite close together. And I'm not going to worry uh, about whether I've got two or three. Uh, I'm just going to go with it because I've got so many to get through and it doesn't really matter, you know, they will grow fine either way. So one of the things I like about these mole seeds is they come in these really good sealable packets which means obviously everything lasts a lot longer when it's like that so once I've got the seeds in the modules and I'll show you the modules I'm using in a second I just sort of sprinkle a little bit and just wipe my hand over to settle everything in and I'm going to give a really good water later so these are the 40 cell trays from Containerwise I really like these trays, really great. So next up on my list, I'm doing Rocket. And again, doing moles. And this is Rocket Uber. Now, I'm not gonna do Rocket over winter this year. I'll be taking it out uh, in sort of November sort of time. Uh, so I'm probably gonna plant it in beds that will ultimately become garlic and so just as the garlic's kind of breaking through I'll be taking the salad rocket out. I even under cover in the polytunnel I haven't found it to be a great crop really. It's acceptable but there are better alternatives and in its place this year I'm putting extra Claytonia or minus lettuce because I've just found that to be so superior uh, to other winter lettuces, albeit slightly fiddly to harvest, but it's so much better harvesting it from the polytunnel. And because I'm not overwintering this rocket, and because I'm kind of going to pick it and use it quite fast, I'm going to put three seeds per module. You probably wouldn't put as many as this in. You'd probably do two seeds per module if you wanted it to overwinter. And again, I'm not gonna overly stress 
about the quantity two or three or even the odd four are going to be just fine um, and this is going to get planted outside so I'm right up on the limit really I think for uh, sowing it to grow on outside but that's also kind of partly the rationale why I'm putting quite a few seeds in here because I might only get uh, about a month's harvest you know sort of three or four picks off it so so next up on my list is tough ball an overwintering onion and as I've mentioned many times before with overwintering onions it's hard to know when the best time to sow them is because if they're too big in early spring they go to seed and if they're too small in autumn they don't make it through winter very successfully so you know the best thing to do since you can't predict what the weather conditions are going to be like between now and spring is to sow multiple successions so I happen to have got these seeds from Pro Seeds and I got them two years ago and they germinated really well in the first batch that I sowed. I'll just show you those now. And actually I've got another batch as well but they're sort of out of the way so I can't show you those. But yeah, so anyway, I think this is my last batch of of these and I'm just going to do four seeds per module hoping that three will germinate and so I'm being slightly more careful with this number because otherwise you just get loads of little tiny onions and I don't want that I just want medium sized onions so I might even thin out at planting time or in early spring, probably more like early spring. Uh, I'll thin it down to three seeds because I find that that gives me three good sized bulbs in summer. And I was very pleased this year with the uh, harvest of the tough balls. Uh, in fact, I've been pleased most years. Um, yeah, they're very reliable overwintered onion so it turns out I have got a few of those seeds left over enough for another small tray like this so uh, I will probably do another batch towards the end of August so that's the tough balls and say so I've got another tray like this so in total I've got 40 times 3 that's 120 that's about what we need So next up, oh, let's just do these lettuce. So I always start my lettuce in a little tray like this. And I'm reusing labels. So if you see writing on the back, that's just what the label was used for previously. These labels are pretty good actually and using a Sharpie pen. They, they generally fade by the time you want to reuse them again. So that works out quite nicely. So first what I'm doing is flashy bus rope and you know I really like this lettuce but because it's got these beautiful markings on it but I don't need too many of them so I'm only going to do you know six or seven. Um, in the past I've been guilty of doing far too many lettuce but uh, Kind of getting control of my impulses now then navara is probably the best lettuce that i've got for this time of year but for me it doesn't overwinter very well it lives over winter but it tends to get a bit of mildew so this is the last sowing for me of navara and i'll switch over to sort of more mildew resistant um, varieties for actually growing through winter uh, and for harvesting continuously in winter what you will see though is me when it comes to Navara is sort of doing a batch in November which I then plant out 
uh, in sort of late November or December and those don't get mildew because they're small little plants it's really cold by that time and that gives me a really nice early spring harvest and I do that because Navarra is one of my favorite lettuces to grow so I want it as early as possible in spring so now I'm just doing Grenoble red I don't need too many Grenoble red because I'm going to do loads of Grenoble red in uh, in winter and for, sorry for harvest in winter but it's you know it's nice to have a few because it's a really nice lettuce in autumn as well And then Rickia, it's another fantastic autumn lettuce. I actually really like Rickia over winter as well. Just kind of slightly run out of steam in the sort of January, February period. But uh, for the rest of all through December, it's really great. And then it really comes back to life in early spring. So really quickly. So it's another good one. And it's also another good one to do in November uh, undergrow lights for planting out in sort of early December uh, again for a uh, nice early spring harvest and then canasta it's kind of my favorite summer lettuce um, but I like to keep it going for as long as possible and I'm sowing a lot of these because the germination wasn't very good and I only need a handful of them but Alison very kindly has sent me some in the post which I'll be using for my November sowing again to go and grow under cover from December for an early spring harvest And yep, just the last one is one of my Salanovas, and this one is Hawking. It's okay, it's not the best of the Salanovas, but I've got quite a range of Salanovas. I'm only going to do three. And the thing is, with Salanovas, the harvest from them is huge, um, so you don't need very many of them. So I can harvest that one a week over a three week period. So these, all these lettuces are the lettuces we're now going to be eating in sort of late autumn. And then we'll switch over to the lettuces that will be in this polytunnel. So these will start out life in probably in one of my coal frames. And I'm tending to cover my lettuces now with a fine mesh and that is just because we're having so many problems with caterpillars and cutworms and all of that sort of thing so a fine mesh seems to help a little bit, bit with that so that's all those done so next we're going to do claytonia and you don't need to do claytonia in such big modules as these but what I find is that, you know, Claytonia is one of those things that you can keep it in the modules for quite a long time, which means you don't have to plant it out and, you know, replace a productive crop if you do it in these bigger modules. So you know, probably stay in these modules maybe for six weeks and that's six weeks of extra harvest from for example a beetroot bed or something like that so I like to put a few seeds and these are very tiny seeds so it's a lot easier to put a few in and um, I don't think you want more than four or five and this kind of spread so um, you know, even though they're tiny little seeds, you do end up getting, you know, quite a big clump. And some of these, so they're so tiny that I end up putting, 
you know, five or six in there. I don't think it doesn't seem to matter very much. You know, the, the plants kind of respond to being planted close together. And just get this huge sort of mound of leaves. It's really fantastic crop. I might even have a picture for you from the polytunnel last year, if I can remember to find it. So I'm doing 12 of those and that's kind of enough at least, that'll do at least just over a square meter of uh, Claytonia. So it's pretty good. Almost everything that I'm sowing, I'm sowing about a centimeter deep. Forget all this rubbish that you read about sowing things twice the depth of the size of the seed. And honestly, I don't know where that comes from. Probably Monty Don said it once or something, but anyway, much better to do things, most things about a centimetre. If you do them that close to the surface, you know, a tiny seed like Claytonia will just dry out, you know, within a day. So uh, absolutely hopeless advice. Whereas a centimetre deep, you know, it's going to take two or three days for it to dry out if you give it a good water. So now I'm doing North Holland Blood Red and Lilia. And I keep them in the same seed packet because I'm always doing half of one and half of the other. So it just makes it easier to keep track of, uh, of the seeds that I sow at the same time in the same size of tray in the same quantity. So, you know, they go together like companions. And the reason that I'm doing the two varieties is as a kind of hedge against potential problems with one or other of the varieties. Um, you know, I try and do this all the time, is sow multiple varieties and multiple successions of those varieties to make sure that at least one of them works. And that's kind of the things you do when you're self-sufficient and you can't afford for crops to fail. And yeah, it's going to be interesting to compare these two because this is really moist compost and this is really dry compost. So anyway, these are from Premier Seeds and Lilia is a beautiful purple salad onion. And yeah, one of my absolute favorites. And again, I'm here, I'm not being too fussy with the number because if you do a small number, say five or six, that bunch will come ready a few weeks before a bunch where you do sort of eight or nine. And that, you know, differential timing is really useful. It's really useful to have some coming early. And, you know, that's so true that sometimes it's worth just doing some with, you know, three or four seeds in. Um, because they might come through, come ready, you know, maybe even four weeks earlier than a bunch with nine seeds in. And I always harvest in bunches. So both Lilia, Lilia and North Holland Blood Red are bulbin onions. But obviously at that density of, you know, between, let's say, six and nine, you're not going to get much of a bulb. And also, so now, that they would almost certainly go to seed before they got chance to bulb up. But if you were sowing them in February, then uh, you could sow them as salad onions. And if you found that you had too many salad onions, you could leave them to bulb, and then you'd be eating them as small bulbs in summer. And that's what we're doing right now, because we often sow too many salad onions. We end up giving loads of them away. So this year, rather than giving them away we are eating them and uh, having a one or two big salad onions effectively 
a day each. And again, these are moles. Again, absolutely stacks in a packet. And that's also one of the nice things because the Premier Seed packet is not sealed, but putting it in the mould packet means I get a really nice airtight seal on it, so that's nice. So these are in the 20 cell trays from ContainerWise, the so-called Hugh Richards cell tray. No relation to me. So now I'm going to do Tokyo Cross. If I can find the seeds. I thought I'd got them all ready, but I haven't. So Tokyo Cross is a fantastic um, turnip, particularly great in spring and autumn. And it's getting a little bit late now to sow it. If you've got a really sunny spot, you could probably sow it for another week or so. Um, if you were to grow it under cover, you could probably start it in September. But uh, it, you know, I hardly have any you know, fully sunny spots. So for me, kind of the middle of August is about right. And I'm just going to put three per module. If you were doing this in spring, you could do four. But three per module is about right. And they hold really well in the ground, these. So, you know, they, if they come ready before you're ready to eat them, you can just leave them for weeks and they just stay. They don't go woody, they don't grow overly big because the light levels are reducing, they don't have an en enough energy to grow really big. Um, yeah, so it's worth doing quite a lot. So in my case, I'm doing 60. Three per module, 20 modules, again in the containerized cell. I just point out I am not sponsored by containerized, I just happen to be using their trays now for most things because I invested heavily in those. And I do recommend them, but I don't universally recommend them. And I do have a video going through the ones that I recommend and the ones I don't recommend. I definitely don't recommend the Charles Dowding ones, which uh, dry out far too quickly for me and are far too fiddly to use. Okay, so next I'm doing corn salad and the variety is Vit, and they're gonna use most of these up since got the, managed to get the packet wet. And corn salad is one of my favorite salads for growing over winter for harvest during winter. So primarily in January and February when true lettuce is growing really slowly. And corn salad is really great because by then it's grown to maturity. It's standing in good condition outside and uh, I'll be uh, harvesting it, as I say, all the way through January and February. It rapidly goes to seed in March, so really try and get it eaten before then. And again, this is one where if you're growing it in full sun, maybe you could sow it towards the end of August, but maybe even in early September. But if you're growing it like I am in partial shade, you definitely want to get it sown by the middle of August. And I've already got a tray of these coming along nicely. And I've got another tray to sew as well. So I'm doing um, two batches of 80 seeds each, two per module. 
and you can see in the ones that I've already sown that I haven't had 100% germination and there are a few cells where I haven't got any germinated and so I'll thin out uh, sorry thin out I'll prick out some of the spares and then I'll thin out any that I've got more than two growing in because you don't want to multi-sow these so these are from uh, vital seeds I found these to be a really good seed supplier but the packaging is just paper so it's not ideal um, but germination has always been good and they've got a nice range of winter veggies as well which is good always nice to see seed suppliers uh, kind of embracing winter growing and then i'm back to onions and i'm doing guardsman which is my favorite uh, white salad onion and again on i'm using moles germination's been pretty good with these and i've got uh, quite a few trays of these on the go already as well so I've been pretty pleased with them so far and again just like the previous salad onions I'm just doing a pinch and I'm not too worried I like a mix of numbers in these module cells. I like Guardsman because it's kind of true to its name. It does tend to stand up nice and tall. It doesn't flop over in the sort of winter gales as much as a White Lisbon does, for example. It's a little bit more expensive than White Lisbon. But, you know, from if you grow a lot of salad onions like I do, you can buy them in bulk from moles and it's fine. And then finally, <coughs> I've got some cherry bell radish. I prefer these small uh, little radishes at this time of year. And we don't grow radishes in summer, so we uh, primarily grow them in spring. And or harvest them rather in spring and harvest them in autumn we generally don't harvest them in winter either so again like everything else it was about a centimeter deep and because these are growing going to be growing in light levels are reducing quite a bit again i'm only just doing three per module and i am being slightly careful to make sure that it is two or three with the occasional four otherwise you know they probably won't end up growing to maturity in time you they probably would if you left them for absolutely ages you know like well into sort of october but i generally need all my beds by uh, certainly by the second week in october so if they hadn't grown by then they would be sacrificed and a replacement crop put in. But like turnips, they also hold really well in the ground when they're sown at this time of year. They don't go woody, they don't get overly big. So that's it. And I've got a previous batch almost ready for planting out. Just got to find somewhere to put it now. So you might be wondering where on earth am I going to plant all of this stuff? Well, basically in the pepper beds and the early t uh, parsnip bed and the melon beds. So that is quite a decent 
sowing and just give them a good water in. And I'm going to leave them on the polytunnel floor for a few days uh, and then I'll move them somewhere safe from slugs and snails. But I can kind of keep an eye on them down here.